Hello everyone, this is Dr. Pete and just coming off the Christmas break and uh, man what a good time you know spending it with family and friends and just getting a lot out of it so it's a really good time hopefully people are still having a good break going into the New Year's uh, situation in the year having said that I you know I get calls throughout the whole break even on Christmas and I don't mind that I really I really understand that there are some people that truly need the help and support and Christmas Eve and Christmas are in essence the only day they might need help so I don't I really fundamentally do not have a problem with that uh, having said that you know it happens uh, some students text which I think is pretty cool it allows me to continue doing holiday events but at the same time not getting stuck in a phone call in the middle of some family events. So I, I do appreciate that as well. So I think technology really is cool in a lot of ways. And having said that, I would always tell students, really contact professors or anyone um, dealing with something like this at an absolute worst case scenario, meaning can it wait till the 26th? Is it really that big of a deal? Because even though professors do want to help, and I believe that fundamentally, uh, most do uh, there are limits you know so just kind of put that in perspective but I always have to jokingly say and this is not to any student specific but there there's always one student that sits there and uh, turns in a paper and the paper is maybe not of the best quality or they believe it's of that quality but you think it's not of that quality and uh, any person has been a teacher or a professor has run into these situations well if you've taught enough you've you've seen it and my favorite is when someone becomes a lawyer or when they become um, I don't know how to say this they become a great writer and researcher after the fact like they'll actually go in and analyze every aspect every video every policy every syllabus comment and they'll make this long paper defending what they did it, it, it amazes me how much effort will go into this paper but then you say, well, why don't you just do this in the first paper? You know, instead of worrying about justifying the grade and what you did, why don't you do this in the first paper? And for some reason, it, it's every now and then you run into this. And I, I really don't know why. And I, I've never understood it fully. But but then the next paper will come along and they won't make the changes that you said because they'll sit there and say, no, I don't have to do that. This is what I have to do. It's like you're not grading the paper. Just take the time. And listen, uh, if the professor says, I want my name to be, you know, Bob Smith, then write Bob Smith. Don't put Professor Bob Smith. Or if they want Professor Bob Smith, put that. But but do what they want within reason. I mean, if it's not unreasonable, you know, just, just go ahead and do it. Because I've always said this before, as a professor, there are professors who will get their points back eventually. If you turn them into the dean and get them in trouble... What, you know, I use that quotes trouble, then they're just going to say, that's fine. I'll get my points back later. I'll give you the 10 points, 15, 20. It doesn't matter because they'll take 30, 40 points down the road, two, three at a time, and you won't even see it. And then you'll say, well, I got my points and I taught them a lesson. You're not teaching anybody a lesson. I mean, there are bad professors who do not communicate. Yes, they should be turned in or they should be, you know, asked to communicate better. I agree with that. And there are some that just don't give any feedback, and I agree with that as well. But there are a lot of them that are doing a good job. And when students sit there and are critical of those things without really justification, then it becomes very difficult. And people, they start doing a worse job, or they worry more about the attack versus the feedback. Another thing, too, is it's okay to give compliments. And I know this is a crazy concept, but if you want to, it's okay to call a school and say, this professor is doing a great job. Uh, it's not about me. I'm retired military. I can, it doesn't really matter if I teach or not. But there are people who really depend on this. So I always say the rule to my kids is if you're willing to make complaints, then you should be willing to make compliments. And you should be willing to call people and say, you know, this person did an excellent job. I, I don't I don't want a gift card and I don't want um, a bonus or some special mailing or discounts or whatever I just want to say and express this person did a great job and and what's really interesting I've studied people for many many years um, what's really interesting is when you do that you can tell an organization's culture real quick some are very supportive and they understand and all that some will say well we don't get compliments I don't know what to do with it 
And then you have to follow up and say, well, who do I talk to who does know how to do something with a compliment? I've seen those companies. It's very, very amazing. One time I got a vice president of a company and they actually called me back and said, we've never had a compliment like this. We're going to start setting up a compliment line. Good, good for you. Okay, but anyways, not to get too far off topic. If there's anything out there, uh, got a bunch of topics coming in. Someone wanted one on my my comments about ingredients and cakes and papers and sources. Those are related and alien video and stuff like that. So I'm working on it. I'm working. I got a lot going on, but I'm working over the holidays. So I appreciate it. And hopefully, again, all the holiday break went great for everybody. And I wish everybody the best of luck, especially a great 2017. Thank you.